Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. While Mary Farmer coveted her neighbor's goods, another Mary wanted it all. I'm Mary Ellen, how are you doing? Her ability to manipulate people makes her truly scary. I want them gone, I, and I can't find anyone to do it. It's the early 80s in the San Fernando Valley. A lust for the good life is 35-year-old Mary Ellen Samuel's trademark. Well, Mary Ellen was completely enamored with the Southern California dream. It's this desire for luxury which initially attracted her to her second husband. Surprise for you, darling. Bob Samuels. Because he worked in the motion picture industry, Mary Ellen thought maybe it was her ticket to Hollywood. I love you. Where were you? But when Mary Ellen realizes Bob is unable to satisfy her voracious appetite. But she was a bottomless pit. She gives up on the marriage. Two years later, as the couple moves closer to a divorce, a dip in Bob's finances threatens her lifestyle. Mary Ellen begins to figure out, well, this guy's worth more to be dead than alive. If Bob were to die as her husband, she stands to make nearly half a million dollars in insurance and properties. If he divorces her, almost nothing. She hatches a sinister plan and starts scheming in the most unlikely of places. Oh, Mary Ellen never did her own dirty work. She went to all of the bars in the San Fernando Valley saying, hey, do you know a hitman? Listen, how much do you want? Hmm? Because the proposition is made so casually, <laughs> no one takes Mary Ellen seriously. I can't help you with that. So she goes closer to home, hitting up her daughter Nicole's fiance, small time drug dealer, Jimmy Bernstein, to get the job done. Out of love for Nicole and some cold cash, Jimmy will make sure Bob will be dealt with. Bob was having a typical night at home, and somebody comes up behind him, an intruder, hits him on the back of the head, knocks him out, and then shoots him in the head through a pillow, using the pillow as a silencer. After getting word that Bob has been murdered, Mary Ellen devises a plan to divert suspicion. Mary Ellen was leaving messages on Bob's answering machine, and finally she went over to the house and found the body. Believing she's gotten away with murder, Mary Ellen cashes in, and the shopping spree begins with her nearly half a million dollar payout. And she just starts partying and she starts spending money. It just never stopped. Mary Ellen is spiraling out of control, and it's about to catch up with her. Jim Bernstein is worried. He's worried that the cops are closing in on him. He's putting pressure on Mary Ellen. So in Mary Ellen's world, that means Jimmy Bernstein's got to go. Mary Ellen is not about to be undone by a two-bit criminal. This time, she approaches a friend who owes her money. She turns to her friend, Anne Hambly, to figure out what to do with her problem. So Anne Hambly comes up with her boyfriend and his buddy. Jimmy is eliminated on June 24th, 1989. The hitman was killed by other hitmen. But back in the valley, paranoia is beginning to take hold. Well, all of a sudden, people who were in Mary Ellen's circle start to wonder, oh my gosh, am I next? So when the badly decomposed body of Jimmy Bernstein is discovered, Mary Ellen's fearful Mary friends Samuels. turn her You're in to arrest. the police. The it's game silent. over for this Mary widow. Mary Ellen Samuels pays the ultimate price for her sins. She's only the fifth woman to be placed on California's death row. 